My presentation today is on the atomic layer deposition, commonly referred to as ALD. We take a quick look at different aspects of ALD, which we shall touch down upon in this presentation. A brief journey through the history of development of ALD over the years, followed by looking at the working science behind the technology. We'll also see how ALD is relevant to the lab manufacturing force. A short discussion on the pertinent advantages and disadvantages of the technology we follow, and we will finish up by looking at some of the interesting applications of ALD. So, looking at history. The atomic layer deposition process was first proposed by Dr. Alice Kowski in his PhD thesis published in 1952. He certainly understood the significance and importance of this hypothetical technology and therefore directed his further research pursuits towards realizing it. Under his supervision, Dr. S.I. Colso performed experiments and published the first principles of ALD by the name Molecular Layering. More than a decade later, Dr. Tuomo Santola and his co-workers developed the first industrially viable prototype of ALD, then called Atomic Layer Epitaxy. This thinful deposition technology found its first applications in TFEL displays. I've put up a few pictures of commercially available electroluminescent displays so that you may relate to the places where you may have used them. So these are some of the examples. And then, through several steps of evolution of the past four decades, atomic layer deposition is quite an established and widely used technique today. Okay, so let us get into, into, into the underlying principles of atomic layer deposition. Here is shown a card representation of an ALD device built block. And here is a top view of the same. The golden yellow patch within the ALD machine is actually the wafer on which atomic layers will be deposited. ALD occurs by chemical reaction of precursors which are pulsed sequentially. Unlike CVD or other similar deposition methods, the precursors are not pumped into the reaction zone simultaneously. Simultaneous pumping of precursors will lead to reaction within the empty space on top and then the products will settle on the substrate in a discrete fashion. All of this may be used to form thin films. There would not be good control over layer by layer deposition of materials and conformability of the substrate as desired in ALD. As this picture depicts, precursor A shoots out of the left opening and streams across the yellow substrate. This precursor reacts with the substrate and products are formed, which we shall look in a bit greater detail later. The excess precursor in the reaction site products so formed are pumped out of the reaction chamber to the opening on the right. As we shall understand better in a future slide, the precursor becomes excess when the first layer becomes saturated, leading to self-limited single atomic layer growth. This is followed by pulsing precursor B and again pumping it out in a similar fashion. Thus the entire ALD process can be summarized in this diagram. The repeated sequential pulsing and barging of different precursors lead to formation of a thin film with a precisely controlled thickness of the material to be deposited. Atomic layer deposition is a technique that can be used to provide a uniform or better term as conformal coating of atomic or molecular layers on different surfaces including complex 3D geometries, amorphous substrates, nanotubes, etc. Shown here is such a surface and a cross-sectional view helps us understand about the structure better. These essentially form the capacitor trenches of DRAM. The idea is to conformally coat the surface with some material such as aluminium oxide. So here we come to a more detailed understanding about the controlled monolayer formation process of aluminium oxide. We start with a silicon substrate which is terminated using hydroxyl functional groups. We pulse precursor A, which 
which is trimethyl aluminium. One methyl group of DNA accepts hydrogen in the hydroxyl group. A new bond forms between aluminium and the oxygen of the hydroxyl group. Thus, dimethyl aluminium monoxide is formed, while methane forms a byproduct. Similar reactions continue to occur. It can be well understood that if there be n hydroxyl ions on the surface, surface in presence of sufficient quantity of DNA molecules, n DNA molecules would react with them and thus form a bed of dimethyl aluminium monoxide. And the reaction will stop thereafter. This is a self limiting nature of the reaction, which helps gain a good control over the layer by layer deposition of materials with a thickness position to its polar level. The excess DNA is purged out of the reaction chamber through the outlet vent. We then pulse precursor B, which is water. As expected, the water molecule comes and breaks the bond between aluminium and carbon to form a stronger bond between aluminium and oxygen, and methane is again formed as a byproduct. Similar reactions continue to occur till all aluminium methyl bonds are replaced by aluminium oxygen bonds. Water is then purged. Thus, the same steps repeat and layers of aluminium oxide continue to form. The box shows the surface reactions in the equation form. The overall reaction is also given. Thus, each capacitor trench now looks like this a conformal coating of aluminium oxide with precise control of thickness. And a zoomed out view shows the array of DRAM capacitor trenches in all its royal glory. Note the aspect ratio is roughly 15 to 1, greater than 10 to 1, actually, as Professor Wrightly uh, claimed in one of his videos. This picture is a real image corresponding to the cartoon to its left, a scanning electron micrograph of 300 nanometer aluminum oxide flow on a silicon wafer with a trench structure. This picture shows the coated silicon wafer and this basic ALU process of different precursors and certain different conditions like temperature and pressure can be suitably optimized to coat various substrates like semiconductors, polymers, biological samples, particles, amorphous substrates, etc. With a plethora of materials like oxides, nitrites, metals, polymers, and so on. Now, during the nano manufacturing course so far, we have seen the application of ALD in certain places, particularly during the transistor manufacturing steps in FEOL and PEOL videos. I would like to highlight some of them, mainly the ones where ALD appeared inevitable to me. Here we are looking at such a snapshot of the screen. The professor was describing a conformal nitride layer for spacer formation, and if I am not wrong, he too mentioned the requirement of ALD for fabricating this envelope. Yet another example of the same video is the requirement conformal deposition of a thin metal like nickel layer. This is the first step towards the formation of nickel silicide contacts, or what is known as salicide. Towards the back end of the line, we would require a titanium nitride, a thin layer deposition, conformally around the silicon oxide, to act as a barrier between the oxide and the tungsten layer to be deposited thereafter. This picture is a 3D cartoon. The same. The blue layer on top and within the trenches is titanium nitride, all which looks so familiar after our discussion on ALD deposition so far. As we mentioned earlier, the same underlying principle of ALD is used under slightly different conditions depending on the substrate and deposited, and accordingly, different standard methods are widely accepted and utilized today. 
The most generic form of the atomic layer deposition is thermal AOD. These reactions occur spontaneously at various temperatures. As well known, increasing the temperature increases the kinetics of the reaction, and therefore usually a high temperature is maintained for the reaction to occur properly with low time duration cycles. Metal oxides, nitrides, sulfates, and phosphates are commonly deposited using thermal AOD. However, the same reactions may occur at low temperature as the reactions themselves are highly exothermic. Low temperature deposition is at times required in case the substrate is unable to withstand the high temperature required for optimal deposition conditions, for example, for biological samples. In most cases, the deposition rate and quality remains almost the same at low temperatures, but usually the cycle duration increases as a higher time is required for purging water to prevent thermal CBD from taking place. Some reactions do not take place at low temperatures or rather will take an infinitely long time. These reactions are enhanced using catalysts, for example, silica AOD. Certain materials such as elemental metal or semiconductors are not suitably deposited by the generic thermal ALD. This problem is overcome using the plasma enhanced ALD. In this technique, one of the precursors is used in the plasma or ionized form. Often, plasma sources generate hydrogen radicals to reduce the metal or semiconductor deposits. Metals have a roundabout for radical enhanced. ALD and they can be deposited by different thermal chemistries. These include the fluorocylate elimination chemistry, combustion chemistry, and hydrogen reaction chemistry. As we browse through the different slides, it must have been quite evident that ALD offers a number of advantages that are inevitable to be exploited in today's fabrication technology. At different points in the presentation so far, we have mentioned those advantages. But it's certainly prudent to have a summarized look at them. The first and main advantage is the self limiting nature of the deposition. As explained using relevant graphics, as the atomic or molecular layer becomes saturated at each pulse stage, a highly controlled layer by layer growth can be maintained, leading to precise control of both things. Yet another important issue in any deposition technique is the formation of pinholes, which would effectively change the desired electrical property of the device. Pinholes usually arise from localized degrading and microbubbles which degas during full drying. As is quite evident, such problems are not inherent in ALD because of the unique deposition technique. Third, which is also ascribed to the precise control of the atomic layer by layer growth, is a conformal motion of the substrate. Complex 3D surfaces, including particles, biological samples, and high aspect ratio structures, can be precisely achieved by a few atomic layers as desired, so that the deposition layer follows the substrate surface contours very closely. Finally, it's a highly repeatable process, which is quite obvious given its worldwide acceptance, leading to its robustness. Also, it is definitely scalable, which means the technique is applicable over a surface area of a few nanometers to some centimeters, and there is no hindrance to be on kilometers, so long as the substrate can fit in an ALD machine. According to my perception, while it's true that advantages overshadow the some disadvantages, thus making it viable and inevitable for specific uses, it is certainly good to take a look at a certain drawbacks for a well-rounded understanding of the technology. Like most other modern fabrication technology, ALD ensues a very high cost, both during installation and to keep the facility up and running. Usually typical ALD film forms at 100 to 300 nanometers per hour, which is a bit too high compared to other deposition techniques like CBD, which grows at an average of 60 micro at the same time. One of the important constraints as compared to CBD is the relatively less versatility of the process in terms of availability of 
resources for the atomic layer deposition of the material, such as nickel tetracarbonyl, tungsten tetracarbonyl, and many alkoxides. The Venn diagram shown here roughly gives us an idea about the plethora of materials available for CBD, some of which are also applicable for ALD, while giving ALD an edge only for handful materials. We will now look at a few of the important and innovative applications of ALD. Common but certainly important apps include those in micro and nano electronics, such as deposition of high permittivity gate oxides to produce the tunneling effect for 45 nanometer node transistors and beyond. Other applications include transition metal nitrides like dinitride or tantal nitride to be used as metal barriers, as has also been covered in the course. Magnetic recording heads are some of the newer applications, while how ALD may be applied in DRAM capacitors has already been discussed before. Biomedical devices made using ALD include coatings of biocompatible materials, polymer ALD, and flexible sensors such as this piece of electronics that can stick to human skin for about 24 hours. Flexible sensing devices to be used in clothing factories to detect movement or heart rate have also been fabricated using ALD. This picture shows a Bragg reflector to be used for X-ray reflection made of alternating nano layers of alumina and tungsten, fabricated using atomic layer deposition technique. A three-dimensional photonic crystal may be fabricated using ALD. Photonic crystals are structures made of periodic dielectric materials which can modulate and manipulate light so that they are being researched on to be used in future optical computers. This photonic crystal was made in the following process. A crystal, a crystal area of silicon spheres was fabricated. Tantalum oxide was deposited between the spheres by ALD. This was converted to tantalum nitride in the presence of ammonia. The silica spheres were dissolved in hydrofluoric acid to leave them have this beautiful tonic crystal structure. Similar principles have also been used in biomedical apps to get an intricate exoskeleton model of an insect to be researched on. Finally, I quote some of the references which I have referred to uh, while, present, while preparing this presentation. And I thank you for listening to me and going through my presentation. And I, I would invite you to give a good review of the same. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And I'm really glad that I can study with you.